Hey, yeah! DCWL Fails! This is Derek, the V Extreme, and it's so glad to be here tonight for our first CPV slash pay per view back, and it's DCWL Revenge Reckoning. And this is the first match of the night where it's going to be Olivia Benson taking on Joan of Arc with Duke Nukem as the referee. Now, the reason why this match came about is we had all of these people, they had made promos on the previous DCWL shows. And it was decided that there should be a way of testing their mantles. And Duke Nukem offered to be a referee against the Joan of Arc and Olivia Benson to test him out. Now, I think I know why he wanted to do this. I mean, he obviously has a thing for women, and he, and he wants to obviously be in the middle of this. So, this should be a Wait. testing out match for Olivia Benson and Joan of Arc to see how each other can go. And this is obviously a hardcore match under hardcore DCWL rules, so let's see how that goes. And now, Duke Nukem, I mean, he's already left in the ring while Olivia Benson and Joan of Arc are slapping the shit out of each other. Wait a minute, he got some, a board. Duke Nukem got some board. What's he gonna do, is he gonna hit him? No, he just drops the board. Power slam, and Joan of Arc picks up the board. And now, Duke Nukem picks up the, the stop sign, and he's bringing it into there, and he's dropping Oh, I think I know what Duke Nukem is doing here. He's... He's bringing in weapons, and I think he's encouraging them to... to use them. And now, STF by Joan of Arc on Olivia Benson. Now, it's hard to say who has more of an edge advantage here between Joan of Arc and Olivia Benson. I mean, on one hand, you have to admit that when it comes to, to more military understanding, Joan of Arc has more of a killer instinct than Olivia Benson, but it should also be reckoned that that Olivia Benson is more understanding of technology and is more up-to-date than Joan of Arc. So, I mean, she does bring a lot of knowledge you can say to the table. And, oh, well, oh, what a shot by the steel steps in. Oh, man, just threw them out their head. And I can't believe Olivia Benson is like that. Just was able to withstand it. And now, oh, she just slapped Nuke Nukem. Olivia Benson just slapped Duke Nukem right in the face. And now, oh, and Duke Nukem gives a receipt for that. Elbow drops. And now she's, now Duke, now Olivia Benson and Duke Nukem are just, she's, she's beating the hell out of Duke. And now, ooh, both they're sort of ganging up on her. And now, oh, Olivia Benson grabs that, that board and slapping him. I mean, gotta admit, Olivia Benson drew first blood. She's the one that hit New Nukem, and he's not gonna take that. I mean, he is a man known for his branchness and going in there gun shooting. And he's not gonna take. I mean, Joan of Arc did. Oh, and now another slap. And, oh, he just hit her with the, the board. Joan of Arc, I mean, she is taking advantage of it, but, I mean, this is a hardcore match, and Duke Nukem is the record. And now, they're beating, hitting each other. I mean, Nukem has so far just been responding to what he's been getting. And now, he's, oh, he's talking to, to Joan of Arc, and, Oh, they missed that that flying that flying Boston. Now Olivia Benson was choked 
Look at that camel clutch on the outside. Irish whip. Oh, Duke Nukem got in the way. Duke Nukem is getting... Trying to get in between these two. And, I mean... There is reason for Duke Nukem to be a bit hesitant, a bit angry with these people. With at least Joan. I mean, Joan did call him a sexist, and I which I mean, I can't really dispute. And wait, oh, that finishing kick right to the baby maker. Pinfall. One. Two. One. Oh, man, not even a two count. And that was a bit of a slow count. And oh, a headbutt. I think, I mean, I can understand before that Duke Nukem was maybe mad at her for putting her hands on him, but that wasn't called for right there. And wait a minute, now he's going after Joan of Arc! He's taunting, he grabbed her and dragged her out by there, and now, wait a minute. Oh, she's going after him now. Target right on the knee, and a 6 one not in. Oh, they missed, and now Joan of Arc is slapping Duke Nukem. Punch. Oh, wait, punch reverse? Slap. Taking Duke down, and now... They're fighting. I mean, wait a minute. Double team? Pile driver. I mean, but I think both of them are just. Oh, a blow blow! And another hit. And now Olivia Benson reverses in there. And now, wait a minute. What's Duke Nukem doing with these steel steps? And oh, he just hits her with the steps. Hits Joan with the steps. I mean, Joan did call Duke Nukem a sexist. I mean, which, I mean, I can't really dispute that. And oh, and we'll blow right to Olivia. And punch. I mean, both these women so far have given Duke some reason for this. But also, it should be noted that I mean, it's not like what they're saying is false. I mean, Duke Nukem is known for his like, sort of out of date. And all oh, blow blow right to Duke Nukem. I'm sure a lot of women want to do that to him. Now, Joan of Arc and Duke Nukem are fighting at it. Irish whip into the corner. And oh, what a big suplex. And now, now Olivia Benson got this super steel steps. I mean, both of these women are trying to fight each other while also dealing with Duke Nukem. Oh, the leg split. They're focusing on each other while also fighting off Duke Nukem. Because, I mean, they are in a match. A hardcore match at that. As all pay-per-view matches are in BCWL. And pile driver by Duke. And wait a minute. Duke, he got his pitbull one. He got that sock that he just took out of his his pants. And now wait a minute. Oh, a big swing! Right on Joan of Arc. He drops her right on the steel steps. He's got that dirty sock, that dirty cock sock from his pants. And now headbutt. And oh, both Olivia Benson and Joan of Arc had steel steps in their hands and hitting And wait a minute, oh. Olivia just hit Duke. And now, oh, he, he accidentally hit Joan there. And now he hit, hitting them. And now, wait a minute, oh, he's had a feeling that they're both going up there. And now he grabs Olivia's foot. I mean, he is hitting both of these women. And they threw that fire extinguisher, I think, trying to hit Duke with that. Now, suplex. He throws that back in the ring. And now, Joan has the still set, but not anymore. Slap. And now, Olivia Benson rocking up to her feet, saying, Joan with the blue. And now, ooh, what a big injury. This is really right to the head. And now, they're fighting. 
And now Olivia Benson. A minute lets you do it. Oh, underhook suplex. Slap. Olivia Benson. And now. Oh, that drop kick is reversed. Joan is taken down. And now. They're punching in. Slap. And Olivia is down. And punches. And maybe it drops her ball. The, 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 oh! Crushes her leg right on the steps. Olivia Benson is being put back by. Wait a minute. Duke Nukem is going after her again. And oh, Olivia Benson just hit Joan right in the head. And now Olivia Benson is hitting Duke. I think it was accidental on the first part. Now, wait a minute. What's Joan of Arc doing? Slap, taking the lead down. Joan is all fired up now. Punch, slap is, now wait a minute. Slap, sending the lead down now, wait a minute. Joan of Arc is getting fired up even more. Grabs her, and big swing. She's going, they're hitting that big swing, and Olivia Benson is down. And now, oh wait a minute, Duke Nukem is just hitting her with these, with that fire extinguisher and just beating the shit on her. Olivia Benson's up. She could have not so bad, but whatever. Now wait a minute, leg split again. And then they're fighting each other. No, continue with Duke Nukem. Oh, she just sent that table He's flying at Duke. Now they're both hitting each other, and now Duke wisely getting out of the ring. I think he, I think he knows he's outnumbered here, and these aren't just two average women. So he's a bit smart. Now wait a minute. She got the fire extinguisher, and wait, block, slaps again. They're trading slaps and. Duke Nukem got slapped again right in the face. Olivia Benson now leg drop. Wait a minute, pinball. And wait, Duke is not even counting the pin. He didn't even try to count the pin. What the fuck, Duke? I mean, I know Duke is the sort of guy that likes pain and likes to see people inflicted on each other, really. He prefers to do it himself. But, oh, he just hit her with this headbutt. I mean, you can say that it's unclear, like, exactly what Duke is going for here. They put Sizi on in. Oh, man! What a big... Just throwing that fire extinguisher and hitting her right in the back of the head. And now these knee strikes right to the face of Joan of Arc. And now pinball. Duke Nukem, one, two... Three! What a, 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 a fast count, and Olivia Benson has won. I don't think she won. Well, I'm sure she doesn't want it this way, but it matters nonetheless because Olivia Benson has won the match against Joan of Arc due to a fast count by Duke Nukem. And I mean, I mean, it's hard to say which side Duke Nukem was on here because he hit them both. It started out with a slap to the face for him, and now. Wait a minute, they got back and ringing. Wait a minute. Oh, that finishing reverse DDT onto Olivia Benson. He's oh, and a ba that baby maker hit. And Olivia Benson's blogging. In. She just had a match and she's been fighting Duke as well. And now, man, coming back in. Another kick to the baby maker. And Olivia Benson, she's standing up. Groggy, but still standing up. What a fighter she is. And abdominal stretch. Joan of Arc is down. Wait a minute. She's grabbing him and oh, a hit to the face. Wait a minute. He's breaking her up, grabbing her. That oh, that finishing reverse DDT. And wait a minute. Again, he's done it. Just adding more damage to Joan of Arc as she's down. And wait a minute. Shakes him off and she's hitting him. She hits him again. Olivia Benson is showing no cool now back suplex. She's really taking it up to Duke Nukem.
but she can only do so much and now wait a minute again that reverse DDT and now doing it again another one man Duke Nukem and a big elbow drop and I mean for fuck's sake Duke I mean Duke hit them both and I mean what the hell he laid them both out I mean Olivia Benson wins and we have our next match of the night which is going to be Macho Jeff and Zangief defending their DCWL titles against Romeo and Juliet and I mean wow I mean that was a hell of a first match a sort of sour taste in my mouth from it and this is our first title match of the night for the DCWL Tag Team Championship I mean and this is the first time a DCWL title has been fought since coming back and Romeo and Juliet are out and now we have the champions Macho Jeff and Zandy they're they've been the DCWL Tag Team Champions for a while of, of, and they are DCWL Domination these DCWL Domination was a team formulated by Danny Jackpot in order to like you know dominate DCWL and to rule it with an iron fist it had lots of people in it before it had Lewis Payne Johnny Rocker Sagat Macho Jeff Zandi they were a big formidable force for a while and there's there was a falling out I would say between these them Danny Jackpot felt like he could go on his own and you know he felt too Danny Jackpot felt that he was too good for DCWL domination and now oh what a hit right to the uh, headbutt right to Romeo and Juliet these are on this outside this is hardcore tornado tag team rules as DCWL matches are going to be at pay-per-views like this and now reverse elbow to the face of Romeo and I mean Macho Jeff and Zangief they are the champs in this but they haven't competed as a tag team in over a decade in DCWL and it's not like they tag team in many other leagues and I mean it should be noted that, that there is a unique dynamic between the between Macho Jeff and Zangi. I mean Macho Jeff is more of the I mean, how do you say wait a minute oh reverses that that splash to the outside but I mean Macho Jeff is sort of known for being the goofball in the group even when part of DCWL and Zangief has always been the one of the muscles of the group now headbutts right to Romeo so I mean it is interesting that these two men decided to stick around for DCWL domination wait a minute oh Bull Nelson slamming a back body drop on the outside and it is interesting that Romeo is taking on Zangief and Juliet's taking on Macho Jeff on the outside back suplex on the outside I mean you can, Romeo and Juliet have much more of a chemistry together like literally they're couples these they are willing to die for each other and now we admit pump handles slam to the outside on the floor and oh what athleticism by Romeo just doing that flip from the German suplex position and now hit. I mean when it comes to power Zangief is the guy to look out for wait a minute roll up pit oh and not even a one count Zangief breaks it up Zangief is the guy to look out for because he's the muscle in this match and now I rate I mean it should be said that Macho Jeff used to be a jobber 
Like, he would lose every match that he would compete in. He even lost against Johnny Walker when he was Johnny Jobber. But he did have a resurgence in new WWE where he did start winning some matches. I mean, he also lost his eye to Ricky O, which is why he has the eye patch. And now face rub. And now, ooh, that drop, that springboard missile drop kick got reversed. And Juliet now, wait a minute. Oh, it. And it scoop slam onto Juliet. I mean, it's hard to keep up with all this action in the ring. Macho Jeff. Oh, there's the, the gallery with that. Now they're both going after Romeo. And, oh, what a kick to the legs. I mean, Romeo and now, oh, headbutt. I mean, these are both. I mean, Romeo and Juliet have the team advantage. Now, wait a minute. Grabs him. What's he doing? Irish whip right into the. Turn right into the steps. And now, right into the apron. What's he doing? Wait. Oh, he was going for a power bomb, but got reversed. Irish whip into the corner. Drop kick on Macho Jeff. Now they're all brawling to the outside. And oh, back suplex to the outside. Now reverse arm drag to the outside. Now Macho Jeff is hitting Juliet. Man, what exciting action for the DCWL Tag Team Championships. And Oh, that reverse suplex. I mean, not that reverse suplex, the... That thing that was on the outside, and now Juliet's coming to the rescue of Romeo. And Macho Jeff, he has a, that ring bell. He's trying to hit Romeo with it. He does, he does, he hits him. Hits him once, but Romeo grabs it and takes it away and throws it down. And now, oh, Juliet just hit him and... Oh, she just hit him. She's hitting, she's beating the shit out of Zangief with that ring bell. That's a metal ring bell. And now, oh, now, Macho Jeff, he's got these rings. And, oh, he hit a miscommunication. He just hit him. And now, now he's beating the shit out of Romeo with it. And a frog splash to the outside. And Macho Jeff is beating the shit out of Romeo with that ring step. And now, hitting Macho Jeff. Oh, he accidentally hit Macho Jeff. And now, they're hitting each other with that very thorny nose. I mean, those thorns will get stuck into you, so I mean, that, that does hurt. And, oh, Macho Jeff got hit. And Macho Jeff got hit against it. These are accidental hits, but they still take him off. And now, Zangief is beating the shit out of Romeo with that, that ring bell. And it roll up. One, two, two, count two. Count and that was two. close. And now, oh, again. The shots with that metal ring bell. I mean, this does show the durability of these two. I mean, in WWE, it usually it takes just like one shot to KO you, but it takes multiple for these men and women. And now, wait a minute, Zangie, please get all pumped up. What's happening? What's he gonna do? Grabs him from behind. Picks him up and wait a minute. Grabs him and now he's gonna be that finishing German suplex slam. Pinball. One, two, three. Three. Pinball. Uh, Zandy wins it for Macho Jeff in DCWL domination. They successfully defend the DCWL Tag Team Championship. Man, what a very back and forth match. They beat the shit out of each other with a ring bell. Along with other variety of weapons, but what an impressive match. With And I said it, Zangief was the man to look out for. He is the muscle. And now, for our next match... It's also going to be another title match. It's going to be Hadouken defending the international title against Trapjaw from the He-Man series. And 
<laughs> this is gonna be a great match. I I see it. Uh, another hardcore match. And I mean, it should be known that Hadouken is a cocky son of a bitch. He has called himself the baddest man on the planet. He's beaten Mike Tyson. And so he has proven it. And he attacked Trapjaw after a match to get after Trapjaw successfully defeated Captain Pollution. So, so yeah, take all that into consideration. Like, Hadouken considers himself the baddest man on the planet, and he has, he's intent to prove it once again. Trapjaw is nobody to sneeze at, and now he takes it to the outside immediately. And, oh, that, that uppercut, and now, oh, what a big hook slim, and now, oh, what a, a reversal. Hadouken ran into that, that spinning back breaker, an arm ringer with a elbow to the back, and hit. I mean, in terms of size and muscle, that would definitely go to trap jaw. And, I mean, Hadouken hasn't really been seen a lot on the call leagues in a while, so there might be a lot of ring rust. I mean, it has been 10 years since he's even defended this title. So, I mean, hit up a cut, and now, what's Hadouken doing? He sends him to the outside. I mean, Hadouken does have something to show. Wait a minute. He got a head, but he drops it. Chops, and oh, what a palm strike right to, right to Trapjaw, sending him to the apron, and now... He went outside, but came back in. Grabbed him from behind. Back suplex. And now, oh, Gorn doesn't do anything. You know it. That super kick is reversed into that ankle lock. Low blow block. Punch and drop. And now Hadouken showing off his striking abilities by, by hitting. Oh, and what a kick. Showing a good martial arts background. And now, wait a minute. Oh, no, he was going to drop a Hadouken. Went too far back for it. Smart by Trap Jaw. And Palm Strike burst into an uppercut. Hadouken has really been playing on the brawler type. And now, oh, what a. Oh, uh, Hell Button. Oh, that caused Trap Jaw to bleed. And now Irish Whip. I think that's fired up Trap Jaw. Which you don't want this big muscly dude in the he man series to get aggressive. Back suplex. Yeah, that blood's all over his face. And as that blood continues to pour, it's going to to be really bad. Called using this in the like wait a minute. What's he doing? He's going to that finishing snowplow on the floor. One, two, no! Hadouken kicked out of that finishing snowplow to the outside. Holy shit! Hadouken shows his durability now. He throws Trapjaw right into the steel steps. I mean, holy shit, bro! He just kicked out. Of trap jaws finishing move, and now Hadouken got the head. Yes, I get the head pun. And now, ooh, a kick just literally kicking Hadouken's ass. And now, a single leg Boston Crab. And, giving it, oh, grabbing the first, and now, going from behind, back suplex. And, oh, going for a grab, but it's where Hadouken trying to create some space, but no! Trapjaw just pulls Hadouken to the outside. I mean, both Trapjaw and Hadouken are evil son of a bitch. Let's get that straight, but... 
but Trapjaw has something to prove. He has something to gain. He wants to win the DCWL international title. And Hadouken wants to continue to show while he is the baddest man on the planet in DCWL. And, oh, back right here. He wants to show that we make grabbing him. Oh, wait, reverse. That super kick sending him Hadouken to the outside. And now kicking him. Sending him all out of the floor. Grab him. Super kick, but it's reversed. I mean, Hadouken wants to show why he's the baddest man on the planet. And he wants to retain it. And now, oh, that paw strike sending Trap Jaw down. And now, wait a minute, grabs him. And all these big freaking headbutts. Man. And now, Trap Jaw is just taunting away. And now, oh, what a big sweep to the leg. And now, Trap Jaw, he's getting all fired up for it. And now, wait a minute. Oh, he just hits Hadouken's face off of the every step. And now he got another head. And now wait a minute, what's he doing? Oh, he's trying to hit him with it. He missed it. And now trying to hit him, but it, Hadouken keeps getting away from it. Now Irish whip reversed. Hadouken goes back first with the steel steps. And again, uppercut. And now Really taking it out of Hadouken. The pinfall. One, two, count two. Count you could have made Hadouken pass out there. Or just trying to weaken him for a pinfall. And it grab him. And oh, that's uppercut cut to the European uppercut to the jaw. And Hadouken sends trap jaw back there. So, I mean, both these men have something to prove. They have something to, to lose in game. And now, kick. See, I do come back. And now, wait a minute. Oh, and reverses that kick. And now, oh, a low blow. And like I said, both these men are evil son of a bitches. So, I mean, it doesn't really surprise me. They're going to try to... Oh, he just puts, his, puts that head right up his ass. I mean, Hadouken's known in call to have to get a head up his ass. Usually it's his own. And now, oh, a super kick. Oh, he countered that. Countered Trap Jaw's momentum with the hit. Now, headbutt. I mean, this is really fast back and forth action, folks. Now, Trap Jaw throws it back in the ring. And now, wait a minute. I think he's calling, I think Trap Jaw may be calling for the end here. Grabs him from behind, and now, oh man, what a back suplex. And right to the back, and now Irish Whip, countered, no. And European uppercut to the jaw, another one. Low blow reversed. Now, oh, Pong strikes him, and now, now, oh, what big strikes. Big super kick sending him down. Now, oh, now, now he's calling for the end. What's he going to go for? Is he going to go for it again? The finishing move, Snowplow. Another one run on Hadouken. This could be it. One, two, three. That's it. Trap Jaw is the new DCWL international champion. I mean, it took two of these snow plows, one to the floor, mind you, in order to finally put Hadouken away. And this could mean that Hadouken is just not the baddest man on play. I mean, I think he got out-muscled by Trapjaw. And now, immediately, going on to our next match, folks, it's going to be for another title, the third title match in a row right now, Daniel Bradson versus Thanos for the NCWL Cruddyweight title. And Daniel Bradson is an American hero, very conservative in his values. He's fought overseas. He's considered a hero to you and me and to everyone. 
and he's glad to defend his title, but I don't think he has any idea what he's going up against. That's Thanos. And Thanos, I mean, he freaking destroyed Spike Lee on the PCW show to get this title shot. I mean, it was nothing but pure, unadulterated destruction, eventually leading to Spike Lee being knocked out. Fight! And, oh, what a headbutt. Now, hits. Now, Irish whips. And, oh, that. Okay, now, wait a minute. Punches. I mean, clear. Oh, and the, got a reverse into that headbutt right to the face of Thanos. I mean, it should be remembered that Thanos obviously has the size and strength advantage of Daniel Bradson. But, I mean, smaller people have defeated Thanos before, like, in games. But I think this is a whole new version of Thanos. Thanos has the ability to God. And every shot that he hits causes massive damage. He's a military, he's a military excellent person. But where, oh, another headline. Where Daniel Bradson is going to have to rely on. He's going to have to rely on his durability and his heart in order to try to outlast Thanos in order to retain the DCWL Crudiway title. And now, oh, Atomic Drop onto Daniel Bradson. Now they're fighting out on the floor. Hits. Daniel Bradson keeps reversing it and throws Thanos back in the ring. Irish with reversing. Now another one of those headlines right to the, the face of Thanos. And now, oh, what a kick right in the face. And oh, another hit. I mean, that's the fan, that's the, the gauntlet man as well. And ends in your right to the face. And oh, what a hit. I mean, get, wait, oh, reverse. And now, oh, man, Thanos is busted open. I mean, Daniel Bradson, again with that hit button. Daniel Bradson has done something that it took the, the Silk, the Avengers, a hell of a long time to do. That means to draw some blood from Thanos. And I think Thanos is going to be pissed off about this. And now when he's going to grab him, he's, oh, he can't lift him up. Thanos is shifting his body weight, and now Pile Driver. Thanos shifted his body weight in order to prevent Daniel Bradson from being able to pick him up. Now Irish Whip, and oh, what a kick right to the gut! The spinning kick gets reversed by Thanos, who blocks it, and now punches. Now punches reverse, and now oh, seeing Daniel Bradson back. Irish Whip, and oh. He was going for that kitchen sink. Me right to the gut, and it didn't work. And now we met Daniel Bradson going from behind. And he, oh, Thanos tried shooting the drink, but it didn't work. Run from behind, and now, oh, kicks right to the back. And now we met again, and slams him down. Slams Thanos down. Again, Thanos is in trouble. He's groggy. I mean, this isn't as dominating a performance as he did in Spike. And now, oh, punches. Punches again. Now, oh, what a headbutt right to the face. Kicks. And now, again, headbutt. And that Daniel Bradson is going to the top. And, oh, that leg drop. And now, wait a minute. Daniel Bradson is going up the top again. And, oh, that shooting star press. That finishing shooting star press. But Thanos has just got up. Thanos just got up from it. Hit. And a kick again. And now, I mean, oh, he's going to suplex him out. But it didn't, and it didn't work. And now, I mean, grabbing him from behind. And spinning net breaker. I mean, can you believe that? Like, that's like a finishing shooting star press. 
by Daniel Bradson, and Thanos just stood up from it. What the, f what the hell, bro? And now punches again. I think Daniel Bradson has to be shocked by that. I mean, like I said, Daniel Bradson's gonna have to rely on his durability. He does not have the strength and size advantage. Now hit. And so he's going to, wait a minute, they're shifting his weight again, and this time more successful than others. Now we wait. Got Enziguri, that kick right in the face. Spedding kick, blocked, hit, and Thanos is grabbing him. And now, Pile Driver. Man. Thanos is showing his own dirt, but you know, wait a minute, hit right at the base of Thanos, he could be out, he could be out, but wait a minute, no, Daniel Bradson, he didn't, I think he knew that Thanos would get out, but now Spear taking Thanos to the outside, and now, all bashing his head against the, the corner, a minute, going to the back, and Swanton Bomb! to the outside, and Thanos is just getting back up again, and now, oh, low blow, hit. I mean, Thanos was close, you know, Thanos close was on the verge of being knocked out, and I mean, that, how ironic would that be? Because he knocked the shit out of Spike Lee to get this shot at the international title. And now, Daniel Bradson grabs him and Irish whips him right back in the ring. Now pinball attempt. One, two, two and no count, count two. two. Thanos kicks out. I mean, look at all the punishment that Thanos has endured. Swanton bombs, that finishing shooting star press. And the, oh, what a kick right in the face. Now pinball. One, two, two. count two again. Count two. I think Daniel Bradson thought he may have knocked Thanos out there, but not the end. Wait a minute. Oh no, he's grabbing, but Thanos goes to now punch again. Thanos punched again, this time with the gauntlet in him. Now, again, Thanos punched him again. Now, Daniel Bradson's on the outside, and now, oh, Daniel Bradson hands are being hit. Yes, so now, wait a minute, going from behind, and oh, Thanos shifting his weight again. Daniel Bradson can't pick him up, and now, hit right to the head. And oh, hit right to the back. And oh, that other thing going on with the punch is not working. Give it in. And arm ringer into the hit right to the shoulders. Now, what's he doing? Going from behind and. That's how he got the back of that way. And Thanos grabs him and what's he doing? Oh, hit right to the back. I mean, this has had been back and forth. Thanos has shown his durability. Now, wait a minute. Oh, he tried to shift away, but no! Thanos has got lifted up again. Now, Thanos is starting to stir. And now, oh, low blow. I mean, it should be. I mean, Daniel Bradson has shown his strength, too. He got Thanos to bleed, which isn't uncommon. Wait a minute. Thanos going for those punches with that gauntlet at the end. Man, grabs him in. Wait a minute. Roll up. One. Two. two. No. And now, wait a minute. Thanos. Oh, I think Thanos is calling for the end here. Grabs him in. Wait a minute. All those punches. And punch right to the face. That's how he ended Spike Lee. Now, pinball. One. One two, two. Three. Three. Thanos has won. The DCWL Crudyweight title with those vicious punches. That's how he knocked out Spike Lee, and the match had to end for him to get the title. Now, Thanos is the new DCWL Crudyweight champion. Holy shit. I mean, what a great effort by Daniel Bradson causing Thanos to bleed. But man. Tonight, I have crushed the so-called American hero, Daniel Bradson, beneath my heel. His bravery was commendable, 
but his strength was no match for the might of Thanos. This title, once a joke, a mere trinket for lesser warriors, now rests in the hands of a true conqueror. No longer shall it be called the Cruddyweight title. From this moment forward, it is the Titan Championship. Under my reign, it will be elevated to a status befitting a champion of my caliber. My dominion over this title shall be eternal, and all who dare challenge me will fall. The age of Thanos has begun, and with it, the Titan Championship shall rise to glory. And, oh man, now Daniel Bradson's getting up. And, oh, what a bitch with that bell. God damn, Thanos has renamed the Cruddyweight title to the Titan Championship. I don't know if he can really do that. I mean, Elon Musk would have to be the one to address that. But, I mean, Thanos says it, that he's renaming the Cruddyweight title to the Titan Championship. And now, we have our special marquee match of the night, where it's Nick Gemini versus Danny Jackpot in this hardcore match. And I have to tell you that an update from Elon Musk to me, that this won't just be any ordinary hardcore match like we see before and throughout the show. This, all the weapons are going to be in the ring. And Nick Gemini is out. And now Danny Jackpot is coming out again. And Danny Jackpot, I mean, he's been a no good son of a bitch himself. And, I mean, all the despicable acts that he did as a part of BCWL domination. And it should be remembered why this match has came about. Nick Gemini, oh! What a hit, and now. Hit the face, and now. Nick got that barbed wire back. And like I said, all the weapons are in the ring for this hardcore match. And Nick Gemini throwing that barbed wire back. And now all that takeover. Nick Gemini. Oh, I poke. I think Nick Gemini is trying to move around the this furniture. Give yourself some men out spinning. I mean, it should know how this match came to be to begin with. Nick Gemini leveraged himself into this match because he wanted to fight Danny Jackpot. And the condition that Nick Gemini gave as owner of DCWL, owner of NCWL, sorry, botch that, for letting. DCWL used his roster, the condition was that he would get to fight Danny Jackpot. Elon Musk said yes, and that's how this match and now Danny Jackpot has been very disrespectful. He's been very arrogant, seeing himself above the rest of people. He called Nick Gemini the Jeff Jarrett of CAW. That Nick Gemini he has to book himself to success. And, and I mean, oh, I poke. Danny Jackpot has leveraged his status as call legend for all these years. And I mean, Danny Jackpot is a call legend. Danny Jackpot. I have known this man for 16 years. Oh, big strike. Sitting him down, and now he's moving around the trash can. Now Danny Jack, he got that. The steel, not steel steps. The the sledgehammer. Now he had the stop sign, but he moved it down. Now, now he got that sledgehammer, but Danny Jackpot snatches it out of his hand. And now, oh, it hit, sending Nick Gemini on the outside. And Nick Gemini is pumped up. He didn't like that. And now. Oh, Danny Jackpot tried to hit him, but Nick Gemini just powered through it. And now, going from behind, and all oh, hit right to the face. And now, figure four by Nick Gemini on the Danny Jackpot. I mean, I think Danny Jackpot may be underestimating Nick Gemini. I mean, I've known Danny Jackpot for 16 years. I know quite a bit about him. And oh, what a spinning punch to the gut. I know this man. I know Danny Jackpot. Now, Geo Takeover. 
I mean, I know Nick Gemini as well too, and wait a minute. Oh, that slam! That judo like slam on the floor. And now Iris whip in the corner. And now, oh, kick to the midsection. Shoulder block on the ground. And now, oh, what a kick to the throat. I think Danny Jackpot is, I mean, it also has to be taken into consideration. This isn't just a normal match. This is a hardcore match with the weapons inside the ring. And now, wait a minute, grabs him. Jack had the sledgehammer that are trading over it. And now, oh, what a geo hit toss once again. And now, wait a minute, Nick Gemini, he's firing up. He got that sledgehammer, but no. Irish whip into the corner. And what's he doing? He grabs him. And now, wait a minute, the finishing. He did his finisher right off the top of the rope. Pinfall one, one two, two, three. three. Holy shit, at 420. Yeah. Ironic, isn't it? How high Danny Jackpot tends to be, but holy shit, I think that's a major upset. I mean, that is a major upset. I mean, and I just was saying this, Danny Jackpot underestimated Nick Gemini, and I mean, it turns out that that must have been true. Nick Gemini has beaten Danny Jackpot in this hardcore match, and man, what an upset over a call legend. And now, jeez. And now, our next match on the night is the main event match. Bobby Caldwell taking on Michael Vick for the DCWL World Title. How, in, Mike, this is a great match. And, I mean, I just gotta say, Danny Jackpot, I mean, has to be shocked by what happened. But like I said, I, I believe he underestimated Nick Gemini. He called him the, the Jeff Jarrett of call wrestling. And he leveraged his call status. But I mean, we'll have to get more updates on that later. And Bobby Caldwell just came out. And now our DCWL champion, Michael Vick, is out. And I mean, it should be noted... Oh, what a hit. They ran right into each other trying to get into this match. And now, oh, spit. Arm ring into it. Hit right in the face. And I mean, obviously when it comes to athletics, Michael Vick is, is the more technically savvy person. Bobby Caldwell is a singer more, but I mean, Bobby Caldwell has shown an, an invigoration, showing how dedicated he is, and now that stretch the outside. And now, oh, that takeover right on the ground. I mean, to know the history of Michael Vick, he won the title on the on the farewell show of BCWL. And I mean Michael Vick in a pinfall. No. Michael Vick, he's gotten tired of saying of apologizing for his actions. He's tired of you know, the dog beating shit. And now, wait a minute. They got their fighting over that board. That piece, that plank, like, more specific. Now, punches, reversing now, all punches in Bob Cuddle with that. Like I said, Michael Vick is tired of saying sorry to the media. He's sorry, you know, he's not saying he's sorry to me. He's, in fact, leading into it. He's leaning into his vicious nature. Showing just who he is, and I think that that vicious nature and that ability to that killer instinct is what's made Michael Vick a dominant. Has made Michael Vick show that he does deserve to be a champion, and I gotta believe that he does have that advantage. Now, wait a minute. 
a baseball bat, and that's not the sport that Michael Vick is known for. But Bobby Caldwell takes the bat out of his hand. Now Irish with reverse countered, and now a hit from us. I mean, if I was Bobby Caldwell, I would leverage the weapon loose. And now that stretch. Right to Michael Vick. I mean, if I was Bobby Caldwell, I'd be trying to beat the shit out of Bobby Vick with these weapons. So he's going to need them. Michael Vick is the more athletic. He is the stronger person of the team. But, and also, Michael Vick is much more dangerous. So, to me, to, for Bobby Caldwell to win this, he has to be able to go the distance, and he has to be able to use the weapons at his surroundings to to go against Michael Vick. And now, oh, Michael Vick was trying to hit with those. Just seven, wait a minute. Roll up. One. One. Two. Two. Oh, what a two count. That was close. Close early on in the match. Now Punk sitting Michael Vick down. That grabbing the board, but now he gets it down. And now, net breaker. Oh, sitting Michael Vick down. And now he's posing with that, with that board. Taunting with the board, that is. And now, grabs a minute. Bobby Caldwell, he's all fired up. Hit. And grabs him and now suplexing him right to the out the inside of the ring. And now Bobby Caldwell got the Oh, he just throws, throws that board. Now he is, I guess he's gonna use the bat and now no. When they grab him from behind and now roll up again. Schoolboy roll up. One, One two, two, no. Count two. That's close. I mean I mean, that is another option that Bobby Caldwell is utilizing. Utilizing extra pins to tire out my neck. And now, wait a minute. Oh, he's going for a close on that gets reversed into that arm lock. And now, get right to the back. Now, just throwing out the back and going for the ball. Grabbing him in now. Michael Vick sitting Bobby Codwell to the outside. Now, hitting him in now, but what's he doing? Suplex right on the floor. Hit again, and now Bobby Codwell to the outside. Sends him there. And now, hit it. Oh, that's right in the ring. Pinfall. One. One. Two. two. Oh, count two. Bobby Caldwell is, I believe, trying to tire out Michael Vick, which is a smart strategy. Frequent pinfalls, trying to exert all the oxygen out of the next lungs. And now he got that board. He's going to look at And, oh, it gets hit in the face. He should have used the board. And now throws him to the outside. And then what's Bobby Caldwell doing? He's going to the floor. And what's he doing? He's all oh, that that headbutt right to the the, the the chest of Michael Vick. And now sends Michael Vick punches. Punches. Now Michael Vick's in the corner. He's cornered him. He grabs him from behind. And now wait a minute. Send him on the top. Kind of buckle. What's he going to do? A super back suplex, spiking Michael Vick right on his head, and now he got that board, and Michael Vick grabs him, hit, punches, reverses, and now Michael Vick getting the better of that exchange, and now punches again, 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 reverses and punches. He's a blowing, now drop kick. Michael Vick was trying to hit him with that plank, but he counters it with a drop kick. And now, Michael Vick couldn't strengthen to use his strength to take Bobby Caldwell out of the way. And now, back suplex. I mean, it should be known that 
is going to put another I think that was more of a splash now wait a minute Bobby Caldwell he's getting all fired up he's getting all fired up here now hit reverse and now wait a minute that finishing like say like I can't even describe that like that I don't can't even say that like I can't even describe what that move is and now wait a minute going to the top that was a finisher and now Oh, it shot the right back, and Michael Dick countered. He moved out of the way. I mean, it was stupid on Bobby Caldwell not to take advantage of it. But, I mean, I think he also knew that Michael Dick is durable. He should have still gone for a pin, though. I hit the leg. It's hard to know what these two men are thinking. Now... Michael Dick throwing him around, throwing him around, hitting the steps. Man, these two are just going at each other. Man, I can't like this has been a just a great match, and I mean, it should be noted that like Michael Vick is just an, oh wait a oh big punch and he just made. Made Michael Vick bleed and now all oh, one shot. Michael Vick is busted open. Now shoulder block. And Michael Vick is holding his ribs as well. I think all those stretches, those abdominal stretches have really gone to his gone to him. And all, all this damage has really taken his toll and now punches. Bobby Cowell has Michael Vick weakened. He has to take advantage of it in order to get the pinfall. He's really doing a number on Michael Vick. And now kick the drop kick sitting Bobby Caldwell down. And now wait a minute, Michael Vick countering and now wait a minute from behind that finishing pump handle soup pump handle slam one pinfall. Oh not even a one cow! Not even a one count. That finishing pump handle, reverse pump handle slam did not even get a one count. Bobby Caldwell is fired up. Bobby Caldwell has adrenaline in his soul. And he will not be denied the DCWL title. Now, pin roll to one, two, go to again. Man. Bobby Caldwell wants this title so bad. And I grabs that board and oh he was going to hit him with it, but Michael Vick hit him back before he could get it. Man. Irish whip and oh tossing him over. And now with these punches. Michael Vick is busted open and he wants he's out for blood as well. Man. Now, abdominal stretch again. Hitting him in now. Michael Vick grabs him and now, oh, big punch. And, man. Wait a minute, grabs him, no what, kicks, punches. No, hits him down. And now, shot right to the balls. Man. I mean, Bobby Caldwell, I'm sure he wants to take this title away from the fans. He is a hero to the fans. And I'm sure he want to take it back, take the DCWO title from Michael Beck. And show that love prevails. And now, hitting him to the outside. I mean, Michael Beck is worse for wear at the moment. Now, oh, that atomic drop. Knee right to the balls. Now, wait a minute. Michael Vick, he's, he's all, he's being pumped up. And now, suplex to the back suplex. And now, oh, he's just hitting him. And now, wait a minute. Bobby Caldwell is sending Michael Vick back into the ring. I think Michael Vick was getting some adrenaline in it, but it didn't work. 
and now sing him to the outside again. Like I said, he's trying to wear out Michael Vick. And it is working. Michael Vick is bloodied and he is bruised. He is, he's holding his ribs. And now Irish whip all oh, right in the corner and grabs him. And now Irish whip right into the ring again. And now pinfall. One, two, count two. Again, Michael Vick will not stay down. But neither will Bobby Caldwell. And now we may grab. Oh, he's going to grab from behind, but he's moved out of the way. And now, now Michael Vick is in the corner with has cornered him, and now he's hitting Bobby Caldwell right in the head. And hit to the back. I mean, that finishing reverse pump handle slam did not work. And now, Michael Vick, I think Michael Vick's getting all pumped up as well. And now, suplex. And what's going to happen here? He grabs him. And, oh, that finishing Falcon Arrow. Finishing Falcon Arrow. One, Pimpa, one, two. two. No! Holy shit. Man, that finishing reverse pump handle slam only got a... Didn't even get a one count. And now that finishing Falcon Arrow got a two. And I mean, Michael Vick has hit Bobby Caldwell with anything. And now he's taunting in the corner. And now, oh, a leg drop. Sitting him down. We don't see Michael Vick going to the top rope often. And he's fired up again. And now, wait a minute. Again. Hitting it. Again, the Falcon Arrow. One, two, three. Pinball. Michael Vick wins, and he retains the GCWL title. Man, what a match. God, it took everything, and Michael Vick is worse for wear. Man. Well, remember, this is all for today. This is Derek the V-Extreme saying goodbye and get wise.